Jim Wagner here, your self-defense instructor. And behind me is the Goldener Löwe Hotel in Zollingen, Germany. And what we're going to cover today is hotel safety. When you travel, there are a lot of dangers. And unfortunately, perhaps on vacation, a lot of people don't think of the dangers. Or if you're a business person, there could be dangers in your own hotel. So what I'm going to do is show you around the hotel and what I do when I travel to be safer, to be a hard target. Ich habe Zimmer für Sie. So, äh, ich äh, trage Ihren Namen und äh, ja, ist äh, alles in Ordnung. Auf Wiedersehen. Hallo, ich habe ein Zimmer reserviert, Herr Wagner. Ja, äh, ist in Ordnung. Ihr Name ist schon da und äh, ja. Okay. Ja, ist okay. Ein Uh, das ist uh, Zimmer 11. 11, okay. Ja, yes. bitte schön. Danke. Tschüss. Tschüss. Alright, one of the first things you want to do when you get off the elevator is check out where the nearest uh, stairwell is. Because if there's a fire or an emergency where uh, there's some sort of a hotel invasion like uh, in Mumbai, India, where the terrorists came looking room for room, floor by floor, killing people, you want to know right away where the staircase is, where the stairwell is. You don't want to be traveling in an elevator, whether in a fire or a terrorist situation, or you're going to be trapped, and especially if it uh, no longer functions. Now set your bag down, look in the stairwell, open the door if there's one or just go down the stairwell if it's open take a quick look and just kind of see where it leads so you have a visual picture now I like to get a non-smoking room because you have to also think other situations besides crime again fire and of course a lot of smokers uh, sometimes they're smoking they fall asleep, uh, it falls into the bed or the couch, next thing you know you have a fire. At least it's not going to be on my room or at least my floor when I have a non-smoking floor. And hopefully everyone respects this rule and at least uh, if it's the fire below me or above me, at least I have a, a more warning, more of a chance. In many hotels, there's a fire door, a door that separates the hallway or stairwell from the rooms and it's one layer of protection. But a lot of hotels keep this thing open when it should be closed. After I've checked out the uh, elevator, the stairwell, the fire door, I like to quickly get in my room and throw my bag in there. But I'm not going to relax because I'm going to do a quick recon, a reconnaissance of the place before I settle down and relax. What you want to do is start looking around in the hallway, see how many rooms there are, uh, see where the emergency exits are, see where the fire extinguisher is. You just want to know the lay of the land. Also, should there be a fire, toxic smoke filling up this hallway, I physically will go and touch each door with my hand to uh, know where they are and count the number of doors until I get to an emergency exit because I may uh, not be able to see very well due to low visibility, due to smoke. Or if it's a fight, perhaps someone uh, hit me in the eye, damaged eye, or threw something in my eyes where I can't see very well, I count the doors with my hand. I also do this in an aircraft. I will physically touch the seats as I go to the lavatory, and then I'll count one, two, three, four, whatever the number is, and there is the exit. And of course in an aircraft, if there's a crash or a fire, 
The people who generally survive are within five seats of an exit. So look around your uh, floor. It only takes uh, 30 seconds to a minute. Then go back in your hotel room and unpack. And then also there's a few things you need to know once you're back in your room. Now, once you're back in the hotel room, immediately lock the door and secure the door. And of course you can keep the key inside in case you need to do a quick escape. Now, immediately locking the door, I will get my go bag and I will get out my doorstop. And this is a very inexpensive uh, item that could uh, save your life. If an intruder is trying to kick open the door, at least it gives you some warning. And uh, for less than two dollars, less than two euro, it's a good uh, safety measure that you're going to shove under the door. After placing your doorstop, the next thing you need to do is study the floor plan, the emergency escape plan, which is usually found on the back of the door. Look it over, examine it, imagine where your room is, and imagine your escape route that you're actually going there mentally. Now, it will be in the foreign language of the country you're in, but most hotels also have it in English because that's the international language. Going back to my luggage, one of the things I like to do is mark my luggage. Now on here, I have a big W for Wagner. I even put in stencil and ink, W-A-G. Again, Wagner. How many uh, blue suitcases are flying at any given day? Two million? Three million? I don't know. But if I get my luggage lost, which I have a few times, uh, not only can they uh, find by the description, but uh, my initials are on there. And uh, if you just don't want to put your uh, both initials, just put the first initial. But make it big and the airlines could easily f uh, find it. Now, of course, uh, you know, what does this have to do with safety? Well, who knows what I'm carrying in here? Perhaps I need some security items that I didn't want to bring onto the plane, like a, like a legal knife or something like that. So mark it and uh, you'll be happy if it's ever lost. The next thing you want to do before you relax and unwind is go open the window and look out the window. You need to see if there's any ledge you can climb onto, if uh, there's a pole you could climb down, a, a rain gutter. You need to know how high you are up and you need to see if there's anything you can climb down on. If there's an emergency and you got to get out, that may be your only option is going out the window. Now, let's take worst case scenario. Let's say I'm up a few floors and I've got to escape sometime during the middle of the night. Well, here's where the go bag comes in handy again. I always carry a paracord in my pack. And of course, any survivalist, any military has a good strand of paracord. Now, this, uh, this could hold a lot of weight and uh, I actually will tie it to perhaps something solid like a bed post or a radiator. And, uh, of course, that's why I have a tactical belt, because I could hook up a carabiner to it, and I could uh, do a rigging situation, and out the window I go. Now, I'm a professional climber. I've done a lot of uh, military and police tactical uh, rappelling, so I have training. So I don't recommend that you uh, do anything like this, uh, or even attempt to, until you've had some uh, professional training and uh, there's lots of schools that will do it, mostly survival schools that do a lot of rock climbing. But if I have to get out, and or maybe I just need to get down uh, several meters, a uh, paracord could help me get there. The next step after checking out your escape routes from the window is once again to get your go bag and pull out your tactical light. And of course this tactical light uh, has a lot of uses, not only for the night if you need to see it, but what I'm going to do is search the room for what we call bugs, uh, microphones, micro cameras. Now, I'm not so much worried about a European country, but in uh, countries where it's questionable, where they spy on their own citizens and they spy on foreigners, uh, sometimes they do place bugs inside hotel rooms. Even if I'm in the United States, my home country, what about if I'm on a protection detail? I'm one of the agents in charge of protecting a diplomat or a, a very rich businessman. 
I need to sweep the area for bugs and check it out because again part of protecting a diplomat or any VIP is to protect them from embarrassment. And the last thing you want is some sort of video to end up on YouTube of a compromising position for your principal. So search behind everything. Search behind TVs, in the TV, on the screen. Uh, search behind photos, search under the bed, search mirrors, see if it's a, a one-way mirror or a two-way mirror where they can look out. You just want to sweep the place the best you can. And of course for you uh, advanced teams, you could use electronic countermeasures. As I unpack, I set out a pair of clothes, an emergency pair of clothes, should I have to leave in the middle of the night in a rush, just like a fireman would do in a uh, fire department. I've got the shoes on the ground, I've got the pants laid out, I've got the shirt, and in an emergency I go right where it's at, put it on, out I go. And of course I have my uh, tactical light, I'm going to take off my uh, go bag, put it next to uh, my clothes, have my tactical light near me, near the bed, near my clothes, and uh, I'm ready to go. Now it's early in the morning here and I'm hungry and of course whenever you're in a restaurant, even a hotel restaurant, you need to pick the POA, the position of advantage. You always have to think that there could be a possible attack. Maybe a gunman comes in the door and starts shooting. I want to always be in a place where I'm on the wall, perhaps a booth, looking inward into the interior of the restaurant. You also want to be a, near a, an exit and right over there is the exit. I could also see someone come in uh, to the side before they see me and there's also an exit on this way and a window should I need it. So I'm going to place myself in the corner where I can see everything. Now I'm here at my table ready to enjoy my breakfast and what about if all of a sudden there was some shooting? Well, you have to pre-plan in your mind, only takes a second or two, what you would do in the case of an emergency. Could be anything, could be an earthquake, uh, it could be a shooting, uh, it could be uh, just someone yelling for help for first aid. So in a case of a shooting, uh, I have some options here. Maybe I'm going to duck under the table and get under there since I'm by myself. Uh, maybe I'm going to grab this knife, uh, use it as a weapon if I need to, or this pot of coffee and I have some good weapons. Uh, maybe I have a weapon on me, whether it's a gun, a knife, and I could pull that out, depending on the situation. But don't just sit there and uh, think nothing's going to ever happen to you. Whether you go into a restaurant or whether you go into a movie theater, uh, wherever there's a public place, uh, quickly formulate a plan, and then that's it. It only takes a few seconds. Not being paranoid, it's just you're going to be ready if something happens, as opposed to the person who just walks in. Then if an emergency happens, they're not even ready, and it takes a few moments to decide what to do, and those few moments could kill you. When you're in a hotel room, you also have to think about information security. Last thing you want to do is start taking receipts or other information with your name or important numbers on it, ripping it up and throwing it in the wastebasket, okay? Because what's going to happen is maybe a maid, maybe someone who uh, has access to the key to this door, or maybe even someone's paying off a hotel employee to get your information and now start harvesting that information and using it against you. Um, so don't put anything in the trash can that has your name or any important numbers on it. Don't rip it up. Uh, take it, put it in your pocket, and uh, take it with you. Uh, put it in a notebook or something, and that notebook goes with you. Also, don't leave behind any valuables. Uh, take your passport. Uh, uh, take your money. And I have uh, my passport and some money here. Uh, but I always keep it in a pocket, and that's why I, I uh, wear some... Uh, civilian color, uh, military type, uh, tactical pants, so I have a lot of cargo pockets and things that uh, I'm not leaving anything behind. I just don't want people to know who I am, what I'm doing. And that also includes uh, the baggage tags uh, that you normally throw away. If I'm going to throw it away, it's going to be uh, in a trash can about two, three blocks from here. 
Now you're probably thinking to yourself, this is a lot of work, a lot of time for something that may never happen. But the truth is it only takes me several minutes to do this and of course it's good. It's like insurance. I may not need it, I may not need to do any of this, but at least I'm prepared for my own security, my own safety, and if uh, my family's with me for theirs. So now I'm going to go enjoy myself and uh, see the sights of Germany. Now behind me is the famous Schlossberg Castle in Germany near Zollingen. Now today I'm wearing a uh, New York City hat and uh, normally I wouldn't do this if I were in Berlin, Paris or a big city where there could be terrorism but in this small little town uh, nobody's really after any Americans here but you got to be careful on what you wear you don't want to draw attention I certainly wouldn't be wearing a, a big American flag in uh, the Middle East so uh, also here I am at this castle but uh, I'm still going to keep my eyes open for pickpockets gunmen uh, somebody harassing me and uh, just enjoy myself <laughs> 